Stop, stop, stop. I can't take it anymore. Oh, I do the live ones too. Yes, I know. I saw your act in the theatre. You're really quite good. Quite a certain harmful habit. Stop it now. I mean it. All right, welcome back. We are breaking up with RBS. This is episode number 52, and I am Tani Santabria. And I'm JDK Winnikin, here to debunk the junk. That's Yet what again, we do. It mm-hmm. is what we do. It's what we do. Yep, it's fun. How are you? Good. It's hot out there. It's I know. cold inside. <laughs> <laughs> Never know which way to go either, right? No, just pack it, pack things. Bring it, bring a jacket. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. You have a jacket on. I could mm-hmm. use one. So I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to remember that. Next and you time. had shorts on too. I know. So you must be too. freezing in here. I know, but it's so nice outside. I know. It it's is. A, it's beautiful. the principle of the whole thing. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you live in the Northwest, everybody, you wear shorts when you can. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyway, so how was your week? How was my week? Yeah. Any junk that you had to debunk? Oh, there's always junk. You know, there's this there momentary, you know, oh, this is going to be so hard sort of pop up, mm-hmm. right? Of of junk that happens all over the place, yeah. right? Yeah. So the stories pop up here mm-hmm. and there. Catch mm-hmm. yourself in the middle of one or mm-hmm. at the start of one or maybe at the end of a three hour long haul of one, <laughs> if you're me, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Right. Well, and then just having conversations with people too about junk all the time. Right. Mm. So, so that reminds me of my own junk when I'm talking about <laughs> other people's junk. Right? right. So we've got junk all over the place and that's okay. <laughs> that's right. that's okay. As long as we notice it's junk and we don't believe it. That's key, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause recognizing that it all it comes from us, mm-hmm. right. It, it happens. And I guess there is reduction over time. Like you can learn to, you know, but, but you don't even really have to worry about that. If it comes up, it comes up. Yeah, well, and, and, you know, one thing that I think probably in the past I could get ahead of myself with is just sort of the wondering about how something might go. Oh, yeah. Right. And yeah. sort of anticipating, you know, all the different ways in which it might not go well. And and then giving a lot of thought to that and mm-hmm. then trying to sort of like, okay, if this, then then, you know, if then, then that, what, what will I do right. if this occurs, right? Sort of try to prepare for all that stuff. That's a lot of energy when I think about it and say it out loud right now. I can feel it. I was just thinking that mm-hmm. as you were talking, because it's not just a thought. It's also stress, mm-hmm. like that energy, right? You're adding. I got to gear myself up for uh-huh. anything that could <laughs> the, possibly go. <laughs> in right, a way, and all of a sudden right. the motor's running faster, faster, mm-hmm. faster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Getting out ahead. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. it isn't. You, that's the thing. I know that when I'm doing that, my, I feel like my blood pressure goes up. Mm-hmm you know, my anxiety or my, my fidgetiness, my restlessness yeah, goes yeah. up. And that's, that's a lot of energy being put towards something that if you think about it, isn't happening, mm-hmm. is likely not to happen. And even if it did happen, you wouldn't be able to control it or stop it or anything. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's energy being spent on BS. And takes you outside of what actually is happening right now. Right. Right. And what you might be able to do or not do. Right. Or be aware of or not be aware of. Mm-hmm. Right. Like right now here. Right. <laughs> so yeah. This that, happens everywhere. Though. That kind of thing would pop up for me a lot. I had this sort of idea that I could sort of like be in control of all of the things if I knew already of what all the possibilities were. Oh, right. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. I'm just, I'm, uh, I'm just too tired to do that anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> I do that less and less. I used to do it a lot. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I actually think once upon a time, I really believe that was just normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what we were supposed to do. Right. right? That way we can handle our lives. Mm -hmm. If we could just predict everything and gear ourselves, you know, like rev ourselves up to deal with, you know, what's going to happen in two hours or five hours or tomorrow. (laughs) Right. That's how we're supposed to live our lives. Uh Well, that really packs on uh, stress in the system. It does. So no wonder why we're all stressed out all the time. Oh yeah. And then, and then as I'm, as I'm listening to you talk, I'm thinking of then from that step, you know, you can say, you tell yourself like I've done, okay, 10 different possibilities. Now, what can I do to make sure the ones that I want to happen are more possible than the others? And that's when like really weird rationales for decisions, you know, or superstitious actions or whatever, all of a sudden all these attempts to control that or make it happen Mm -hmm. can come out. Wow. And that's even more stress on the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then all the while what's happening in front of you is being ignored. 
mm-hmm. whatever that might be. Could be family, people who are close to you, some kind of work uh, project, a coworker who needs to work, you know, alongside you mm-hmm. is is being ignored. It it could be now we're mad because we were thinking about all of this and we got cut off in traffic. And now we're mad at the person who cut us off, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, it, it, road rage all of a sudden. Right. right. And so we're not even paying attention to driving because we're paying attention to what's going to happen later. And then <laughs> how dare somebody cut us off? And then did they even really cut us off? Or was it that we weren't paying attention? Like, oh my God. The energy's swirling in here just now, <laughs> just you talking about that. I'm like, right. my head's spinning from you talking about it. And that's, and ladies and gentlemen, that is what we mean by not being present when you're in that, when you're in that mode, it's all about everything except where you are. Mm -hmm. And, and I I wonder sometimes too, and I know this has been true for me. There have been times I look back and go, man, I missed all that once upon a time because I was perpetually in this mode where I was not present no matter what it was. Mm -hmm. How much did I miss? What did I not notice? You know? And, and you're stressing and yourself, you're stressing yourself out again. Out yeah, <laughs> except I'm not, but because now it's like, okay, well, it's done. So I, what can I do now? I know, I know. It just Go feels on. like you turn the temperature up in here all of a sudden. How, that's <laughs> now so we're all weird. sweaty in uh, here. What in the heck? See, now I'm glad I don't have the jacket. Um, yeah, and it's and it can be around. It can be around significant things, but it can also be around like not significant things that we make significant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anytime we're not present, we're making up something, <laughs> right? We're, again, we've talked about this before, sort of like stuck in the past or worrying about the future, trying to control things that we don't have control over. We're doing and thinking and energized or not around something that isn't here right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and, and so we then, not always, but then are adding to the stress in the body that probably that 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 already exists just because we're human yeah we already have it right we already have some level of stress like okay maybe we have to get uh something done by a deadline Mm -hmm. or maybe we have to get up earlier than we'd like to or maybe we have a long workout planned today or we're getting started like those kinds of things although they are good for us there also is a level of stress that we navigate through just because we are human beings so we want to make sure that we're not just adding to the bucket just for giggles Mm -hmm. um just because we've been conditioned right to be in the past or or future or somewhere else right and and starting to recognize that those places bring on extra stress to the system Mm -hmm. that we don't really need to have yeah and and sometimes it feels too like we tell ourselves that because if we can accomplish that, then it will be worthwhile or it won't be stressful if we accomplish it. But it's only the not completing it that gets stressful. Boy, that's not true either. Holy cow. <laughs> All over the place. Yeah. Wow. Right. Right. So the way in which we think about things. Mm-hmm. Right. So. And what we choose to stress about. Well, yeah, we're choosing it. Whether yeah. we're realizing it or not, certainly it is going to be something we've probably practiced a lot. So it kind of just ends up coming in pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. It's our default or sort of automatic way of letting the brain, letting the thinking space <laughs> do its job, right? We, we do get to choose what we want the thinking space to be thinking about, even though it feels like it's running the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, and that's always the, that's always the crux of the matter, isn't it? Cause like, even if, like you said, situations have stress in them or have energy in them, no matter what they are. And some situations are genuinely stressful. So what we're talking about is just not adding any unnecessary stress to the system, whether the system, whether the situation you're in is stressful and doesn't need, isn't stressful and you don't need stress or it already is. And you don't know, you don't have to add more mm-hmm. in there because mm-hmm. you know, certain things are just inevitably stressful. Yeah. What's inevitably stressful for you? Uh, do you want like a really good example or a silly example? <laughs> I don't care. Whatever example you want to share. Um, you know, uh, grief has felt stressful for me 
or I'm thinking of things that I can add mm -hmm. stress to mm -hmm. grieving something or a loss or uh, a change mm -hmm. in life that can feel like that. Mm -hmm. I can do that. That feel, that can feel stressful. Okay. What so, do I do now? Or yeah. So grieving loss is a sort of stressful situation that we can all relate to. Mm -hmm. And what do you do to add to the bucket? What I've done before is beyond just the feeling of grief that I'm feeling, mm -hmm. telling, you know, stories kick up about what it means. Like, you know, if it's a per, if it's a loved one who passed away, I didn't tell them this or they didn't know this. I wish I would have had this time. What would I have said to them? You know, depending on the circumstances, what, you know, could have anything I'd done helped that type of thing. If it's the end of a relationship, it's what did I do wrong? Or what does this mean for me in the long run? You know, uh, am I a terrible person or I actually, I'm not even asking the question. I'm telling myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, just mm -hmm. adding. Right. And just, even as I talk about it, even as not connected to that approach anymore, I can feel it, feel it in my back. I feel like I'm being pushed forward and my stomach is tight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just recalling those mm -hmm. feelings because mm -hmm. the grief sitting with that, I can remember that. Mm -hmm. But now as I started talking about all those other things. Is, is that because it's generated from the discomfort of the feeling? Those thoughts are generated from the discomfort of the feeling or are the thoughts about generated some other way? I think in the case, it probably depends on what, it, what it is that I'm grieving. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of relationships that have changed, I used to default that it must have been my fault. So that was the starting point. So how was it my fault? And I would almost reinforce that belief. Mm -hmm. um, from if it's somebody who'd passed away and there's that, that type of grief, uh, it comes from not knowing what to do with that, those painful feelings. Mm -hmm. So I want there to be a meaning or I want there to be a, you know, I feel like maybe there's a need for the story can help me make sense of it or help it feel less rather than just having the feelings, having the feelings and just saying, yep, this is really sad. I'm really sad right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So almost trying to talk your way out of the yeah. feelings, yeah. Right. which then creates more stress. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because then something, then it's much bigger than it is, you know, much, much bigger than it is. And I'm the one who made it that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I, my guess is, and I don't know. So just with, without the stories, added on. Yeah. So here you are, there's loss and grief. There's sadness. There's, you know, the, the, the feelings of intense grief. Oh, there's loneliness. loneliness. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's those kinds of things that are there. Right. Mm -hmm. So there, there's where the feelings are in the body. Mm -hmm. And then the thoughts come into play, but the thoughts don't just add to those feelings. The thoughts create other feelings. Yes. Right? Yes. And so then we've, we're dealing with something that is manufactured, mm -hmm. right? Instead of being able to just be with, handle, deal with, whatever. Sit with. Sit with, yeah. The reality of the feelings. Mm -hmm. Like you've added fake feelings, not really. You've added fake feelings to the bucket. Right. Because you know, the, the breakup doesn't feel bad enough. Why not add some self-loathing in there? <laughs> exactly. Right? Because, because, you know, cause that'll help. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's funny. Uh, you know, and, and, I, and I've learned the difference over time of the, you know, when the changes do happen of being able to sit with like, what have I learned from this? Or maybe in retrospect, what did I not handle as well? Or what could I, what do I wish I could have done differently or more accurately? What could I do differently going forward? Spend a lot more time there, but wow, is it really interesting to take myself back there just now mm -hmm. and feel all that again. Yeah. And can that be okay? Right. Can it be okay to feel the reality of being a human being mm -hmm. without having to think your way into other <laughs> fake, fake, let's just call them fake I feelings. Know. I know they're not really because once we get them in there mm -hmm. and we think about them and we put them in there, they feel like real feelings, but, <laughs> but let's be real. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you know what else I'm also occurs to me too, is that it can also, you're asking for examples. I've actually used stories 
to really ruin things that could be good. Mm. Like things I, I enjoy. I can ruin it. Like, why would you want to do that? I, 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 I didn't <laughs> want to do it. I just found myself again, back in the day where I thought this is just what you did. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm thinking of my sports fandom story. Oh yes. The sports fandom. Should I give that real quick? Sure. Okay. Sure. To my chagrin. To your chagrin. Sports I'll, fandoms. I'll, I know sports fandom. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep it quick. My football team a handful of years ago, never won a Super Bowl. It looked like it could, and they were good. And I really wanted them to win. I really identified with them. I had the jerseys. I had the, I knew all the players I watched, on, but I couldn't watch the games on TV because I'd get so stressed. I just couldn't. So I'd have to record them and watch it later if they won or not watch it if they lost. Cause I didn't want the stress at all. If they won a game, I might wear the same Jersey or the same socks or the same shirt the next week. Um, if they won, I wanted to watch all the coverage on television so I could see everybody cheering and feel part of that. And if they lost, I didn't want to hear other people making fun of my team and my other fans. Long story short, they went through the whole season, had a great season with the playoffs. Couldn't watch any of the playoff games. I was so stressed out. They go to the Super Bowl. They win the Super Bowl and they had that thing done in a quarter, but I still couldn't relax. My friend's texting me, Hey, congratulations. They're up by like four touchdowns, five touchdowns, five minutes left. I can't relax. They could blow it. They could blow it. They could blow it. What happened to me? They win the game. I'm more relieved than excited and really bummed out that I'm not excited. And then two days later, I had pneumonia and I missed the parade. So you exhausted yourself. Exhausted myself. Yeah. And that, and that whole experience then after that, I was done. I was like, this is too much. It's too much. Not doing this anymore. I, I got rid of all the superstitions and all that kind of stuff. And I fundamentally began to reshape my relationship to the sports that I'm a fan of. Yeah. Yeah. So all of those feelings that you were describing were manufactured totally. from a headspace. Totally. Yeah. Totally. But had a huge impact on my body from that headspace. I was stressed all the time to the point that I got myself sick by the time it was done. Exactly. Right. Because when we, those feelings that come from a headspace, those feelings that are manufactured from a headspace are this, it's the stress response yeah. in the body. It's junk. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's junk. Yeah. So those aren't going to feel, those are going to make us sick. Mm-hmm. And though, if we just, uh, the real experiences that bring on the stress response in the mm-hmm. body, okay? you know, that the loneliness, the fear, mm-hmm. the loss, the grief, the sadness, because those are related to a real human experience. Not mm-hmm. that baseball is not a real human experience. I know this that it is, football. but for football, football, I was thinking about your baseball days too. <laughs> Sorry. Baseball, football, and they basketball. All um, they, yes, they, all they, they are a real human experience. I get yeah. that. But our emotions, yeah. right? Like, yeah. like we, we can choose how yeah. much we want those emotions to be, how much response yeah. we want to have. And it really does relate to typically the way we're thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Unless we're just really like, we're in the, the space of it and we're feeling the energy of it. And whether team wins or loses, you know, we've got this collective energy in the space mm-hmm. that we are experiencing in this moment related yeah. to the game, right? Yeah. Yeah. But any of that extra stuff is extra stress on the body. And when we're doing it chronically, right, that's mm-hmm. what's hap- that's what happens. That's we good. will exhaust and deplete ourselves and get sick. We will. Yeah. We will. And or be perpetually unhappy because in sports like too, yeah. Mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is in competitive team sports, it's more than likely your team's not gonna win the whole thing. You're gonna sp- you're gonna end many more seasons disappointed than you will really excited <laughs> if you allow yourself to be that way. So that's why for me, I had to fundamentally change my approach and my identification Mm -hmm. with the teams I'm a fan of. Now I'm still just as much of a fan, but it's way different, way different now. And I had to find, I had to find a place to recognize that I'm, I'm rooting for guys wearing the same uniform. It's, Mm -hmm. and that's, you know, and if you took a whole other team of somebody else and put them in my team uniform, I'd be rooting for them and rooting against the other ones. 
So it's it's wild. Fandom is its own kind of madness in that sense. If if we if we let it be, it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Because it's full of BS stories. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like having to hate another team because your team is this and the other team you just hate the other team. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of junk in there. Yes. So I guess that's what I mean by like you know it's whether something bad quote unquote has happened or something that should be enjoyable, like sports, like enjoying sports. Those BS thoughts, that junk, that adding stress to the system can wreck that, wreck the good stuff too. Right. Yeah. Well, when we want a particular outcome, yeah. right, Win. and and we don't get that particular outcome, yeah. I mean, that could be around parenting too. Oh, yeah. Right? You're hoping for a particular outcome with your child at whatever age, and that outcome doesn't occur, whether it's related to sports or whether it's related to school or friends mm-hmm. or... Um, physical abilities or, you know, aptitudes around or capabilities around. If we've got this idea that we need or want this particular way Mm -hmm. of things happening and it doesn't happen, then we can get all spun up about that too. Oh man. Yeah. And that gets us out of the present moment. I would think like, okay, what can I do? This is the reality. This child is not going to do this or doesn't want to do this or what can I do now as opposed to, oh, you're giving a grimace like this is a conversation you've well, been a part of a number of times with clients or. Well, I, I'm just thinking about my own parenting, Oh, right? There are lots of things where I really <laughs> wanted, you know, I guess as a parent, you can kind of like draw the line, right? You can't do that as a fan. <laughs> so around some things as a parent, you can draw the line and say, you know what? I know you don't want to do this, but here's where I draw the line. You got to do it this yeah, way. Right. right. But around a lot of things, as the, as the kids grow up, you really start to see as a parent, if you're paying attention, oh, <laughs> that's different mm-hmm. <laughs> than what I envisioned. <laughs> How do I, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. deal with that? Right. You know, from, from a, a, a wanting to be a supportive parent or or not, you know, oh, depending on what it is. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think anytime that we've got an outcome that we really, you know, feel attached to, mm-hmm. we have the capacity to add stress to the body. When it doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, even around if it does. That's because true. Because you stressed yourself out and couldn't watch a game even when they won. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> And it sounds even more pathetic when you put it that way, <laughs> by the way, than it did when I was telling it. And it already sounded pathetic when I was telling it. <laughs> but you're not doing that anymore. No, I'm not doing that anymore. We're just. <laughs> Shoo. I know. No kidding. No kidding. You don't need any of that extra stress. No, no, yeah. no. And, that, and I would think for, you know, for parents, it would be a similar thing. And, I, and I've had a lot of friends who are parents who I've seen that happen, like something, an outcome they didn't want. And then all of a sudden the stress additions, you know, maybe I didn't, was I too, did I push this too hard or did I not push something enough or am I not as good of a parent as I thought I was or wow. Well, yeah. Just even trying to have the outcome of being a perfect parent. Right. Right. right? Like what is that even? Right. Right. And so Mm -hmm. then those questions come into play. Mm -hmm. How come this isn't happening? I must've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. Or. Or, you know, I didn't do my job. Yeah, I didn't do my job. Or the flip side is, is like, really? No, I didn't. <laughs> I don't do anything wrong. What's wrong with my kid? What's wrong? <laughs> but there's no matter. Either way you look at it, there's something wrong. Right. <laughs> and maybe there isn't. <laughs> so we're all stressed out because things are wrong and they don't have to be. And then you can add. Right. <laughs> I guess that's well, on what all these have in common. I mean, again, it's just that they can all be real things. Like being a fan can be a real thing. Yeah. can bring joy. Having grief happen in your life and loss is it it's a real happens thing. a real thing, mm-hmm. you know successes in parenting and not as successes or just different mm-hmm. outcomes in parenting mm-hmm. can all happen, mm-hmm. and they all bring about their emotional responses. Mm-hmm. What we're talking about is recognizing sitting with the emotions of what is actually happening, and not adding more to stress that system because the system might already be stressed enough. It's going to be because we're humans and we're wired to deal with stress. And so hard things happen that are stressful. Mm -hmm. So our stress response kicks in and it's doing its job. And if we can trust it to do its job around this level of discomfort, Mm -hmm. the reality of discomfort right here, right now, and we don't have to talk our way out of it. 
into it, away from it, <laughs> yeah. wherever we're trying to go yeah. with our thought process about mm. it. If we can just trust the body and that it can it can handle that. We don't have to move away from loneliness just because it's uncomfortable. Correct. And we don't have to try to exert control over the team that's disappointing you because <laughs> you can't. <laughs> right. But you also don't have to try any effort and expend the energy when really just paying attention and recognizing it's going to be a win or loss no matter what you do. And whatever you, whatever emotion you have, you can let that emotion, again, emotions are energy, mm -hmm. let that flow. Yep. You don't have to overthink about it or create those, those BS stories that we talk about mm -hmm. so that then you're just dealing with a baseline level of, of stress. Your body does its thing to work through it. You go back down out of that fight, flight, or freeze, or fawn, and your relaxation and re restoration sort mm -hmm. of branch starts to kick in because it can naturally do that if we let it. If we keep thinking, that's not going to kick in. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then therefore things feel more connected, smoother. Life's a little easier. Yeah. You know what I just thought about really quick? I think we have a couple more minutes is, you know, we have so many, you were, you were saying earlier, like when my team wins, I watch all the commentary. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of commentary, <laughs> which, again, you think about stressing the system, <laughs> right? Like back in the day when there was less commentary, the game would be over. <laughs> we would go on with our lives. lives. Right. <laughs> Instead of watching the highlights four or five times and listening to the, the one hour podcast afterwards and the, the post game that goes for three hours. After you listen to the pregame for three hours? Yeah. Yeah. Might yeah. be a little more, a little much. That's why I don't do a lot of pregame, postgame. <laughs> but it's kind of funny. Like, like we, yep. we, we have things in place that just keep that. Just keep us <laughs> going. Revving up. Because <laughs> that's living, baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, all right. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. That was a lot. Yeah. That was a lot. Yeah. That was great. Mm -hmm. Thanks for, uh, thanks for running through all that. Yeah, was, you too. Yeah, it was yeah. great. And thanks to all of you for listening mm -hmm. uh, to that, to this episode of Breaking Up With Our BS. We'll be back next time with another episode. You can catch this as a podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You can also check out our YouTube channel at Breaking Up With Our BS, our Facebook page of the same name. We'd love to hear from you and, and get your thoughts. And until next week, I am JDK Winnikin. And sitting across from me is... I am Tani Santabria. We will see you guys mm -hmm. then. Take care. Stop, stop, stop. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Oh, I do the live one too. Yes, I know. I saw your act in the theater. You're really quite good. Quite a certain harmful habit.